the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. In scripture, believers are called many things. The Bible has a very unique expression of God's idea about the believer. The believer is called many things in scripture. Jesus himself teaching in what we call the Beatitudes. He called believers light. He called believers salt. Apostle John said, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we are called sons of God. The Bible calls us ambassadors. The Bible calls us many things, but then the Bible also calls us kings and priests. Are we together now? There is a description of man, the believer, according to the image of Christ that is reflecting in him. And there is the description of man according to his functionality. When it has to do with functioning like Christ, the Bible says we are kings and priests. So Apostle Peter is teaching us something here and he says, You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood or a priesthood of kings, a holy nation, peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light the bible tells us that we are kings and then it also says that there is the priesthood ministry of the believer now i'm interested in the priesthood ministry of the believer because it is very important and is the context of our discussion we are priests there is the ministry of priesthood according to scripture in revelations chapter one when you read from verse 4 to 6 revelation chapter 1 let's just look at a few scriptures and then i begin to build from there john to the seven churches which are in asia let's jump to verse 5 please the emphasis is verse 6 and from jesus who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood please read with me verse 6 together one to read and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. The Bible says he has made us kings and he has made us priests. Chapter 5 and verse 10. John is still receiving revelations in heaven. And the Bible says that we have been made kings and priests unto God. And we shall reign on earth. Now, this is very important because he tells us uh, that we are kings and priests. Then he now tells us the jurisdiction of our dominion. That the reality of our kingship and our priesthood should be exerted within this territory of God's kingdom. Are we together now? Very, very, very important. The priesthood of a believer is, is very important. Now, I don't want to go into the theological... Um, exegesis of priesthood the kinds of priesthood and so on and so forth that's not the concern tonight i just want to draw up something and then we pray this is wine pressed hallelujah praise the lord most believers do not understand the responsibility that priesthood demands now please listen very carefully the principles of dominion and I just just while on my way coming I was just going through the theme for the year the prophetic word for the year and I said wow this is amazing 
um, we love to expand we love to think and speak dominion and that's powerful but there are principles that will make for the experience of the same and one of it is understanding priesthood our inability to understand the priesthood of a believer will keep us disadvantaged in spite of everything that has been wrought in Christ now I love God because this is a Bible believing church and this is a church that is theologically sound and and so i'm comfortable to share some of the things that i share i have i believe that i have pointed that here and is worthy of repetition that spiritual realities listen please spiritual realities are are twofold in their operation number one realities as from the standpoint of the christ it is always finished because God does not work with time his realm is not even eternity eternity is time without end God's realm is light God's realm is now there is no tomorrow there is no later in God's realm everything is now now are we together now but in executing the will of God the men that receive that word from God, his prophetic speakings, are limited by time. And there is a reason why God put us in time. Many reasons. Um, there's no time to do that teaching. If there were no time, there would not be a possibility for mercy and forgiveness. Because God tied his mercy to time. The Bible says they are new every morning. Are we together now? <laughs> is the reason why when the beings in the realm of the spirit default there is no forgiveness there is judgment straight up and they are bound in everlasting chains so the saints have an advantage living in time are we together now and so that 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 itself already shows us that realities that are finished from god's realm must have a technology of finding expression within our domain this is where the problem is for many believers because on one side we acknowledge God does not speak to men like he's speaking to men. He speaks to men like he's talking to himself. So God will talk to you as though the house were built. God talks to you as if your children are already saved. God talks to you as if the prosperity is already there because he's not lying. It is his reality. He can't pretend it. Are we together? There's no tomorrow. There's no later. So when God says, I will bless you, he's downgrading himself just for your understanding. In his realm, there is no later. Are you getting the point now? But now you come down to the realm of man. You have to understand the principles of transferring this spiritual reality to become your experience. If you lack this spiritual intelligence, you will continue to confess. You will continue to believe that is profitable, but your life may never capture that experience. Are we together? I'll give you an instance. The Bible says from the foundations of the earth, the lamb was slain. Are we together now? But Jesus had to come in the flesh. When he came to the earth, he came as the word, the logos of God, who now became flesh. Are we together? Walked for 30 years, learned the law, became matured, went to the cross, and paid the price of sin in detail. Your sin was not casted by a word. He went through a process that made his speaking become a reality as powerful as god was and is he did not cast sin out of man he had to go through the protocol that will make the remission of sin an experience are we together the bible says no inhabitant in zion shall say i am sick but then he continues to release graces upon people so that they will actualize that experience. Someone may be respectfully speaking, maybe on a wheelchair or holding a crutch. Now in God's mind, that is an anomaly, for instance. But it does not stop the fact that that is the person's experience here and now. So he grants us access to his word and his spirit to superimpose the realities as seen from his realm. This is what it means in the Lord's Prayer, let it be done in earth as it is in heaven. It's already a reality there, but you must sustain an intelligence to make it true here and now. 
so all that we teach i'm saying this because it's important to understand the context of communications like this they are not an attempt to sabotage the finished work of god of christ they are an attempt to partner with the holy spirit in the manifestation of those truths that have been finished forever oh lord your word is settled not on earth in heaven is settled in heaven it will take this is why he gave us the holy spirit we would not need the holy spirit if there were no need to engage these truths to make it true in our lives are we together so the holy spirit was given to us the word of god was given to us pastors were given after god's heart all these systems to coordinate us to a point where we are strengthening our understanding colossians chapter 1 verse 9 apostle paul is praying and speaking over the church in Colossae that they they be filled with the knowledge of his will number one number two that they be filled with all wisdom and number three that they be filled with all spiritual understanding because when we are filled with these truths then they will help us to manifest to manifest to manifest these realities are we together so we're back to our teaching very quickly priesthood we're dealing with priesthood that the believer has a priesthood dimension and you will need the understanding of priesthood to make manifest everything that has been declared for as according to god's word very quickly i want us to look at just one of the duties of priest first peter chapter 2 please first peter chapter 2 my god verse 5 first peter chapter 2 and verse 5 everyone please read with me apostle peter is teaching us ready ye also as lively stones uh -huh, are built up a spiritual house and a holy priesthood to do what to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to god by jesus christ and so we see here that priesthood is tied to sacrifices that we have been made priests and that part of the jurisdiction of our priesthood ministry would require offering up sacrifices unto god this is very important are we together now and the primary listen very carefully the primary medium for offering the sacrifice of priesthood of the believer is prayer please write it down prayer the prayer ministry of the believer is one of the major dimensions of his operation as far as priesthood is concerned so prayer for the believer is not just an activity that has been endorsed by spiritual leaders it's not just um, a dimension that was demanded for from scripture it is more than an opportunity to petition god it is more than an opportunity to um, um call for help from heaven priesthood is a ministry say unto Archippus that you take charge of the ministry that thou has received from the lord that thou fulfill it so the prayer ministry of the believer is priesthood are we together now this is very very important the church has been on a season of fast and prayer and just feasting on the word this is this is an engineering to bring stability to our priesthood so that through the ministry of fasting the ministry of prayer and engaging the word that every believer comes to a point where we are solid we are stable and we are strong this is a very very noble pursuit and this happens year in year out everybody say prayer, prayer. one more time please say prayer. prayer in luke chapter 18 verse 1 just touch a few scriptures and then i just build and will pray jesus spake a parable the bible says to the end that men ought always to pray that means you are only exempted from prayer if you are not a man provided you are a man prayer is not for prayer warriors prayer is not for men of god prayer is for men 
he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint first thessalonians 5 17 the bible says pray without season it doesn't mean pray from morning to night it means be consistent be consistent in your prayer life james 5 when you read from verse 13 down the bible says is any man afflicted he says let him pray then the bible says the fervent and effectual prayer of the righteous availeth much are we together and then the bible now uses a personality to personify the ministry of prayer it says elijah was a man of like passion and that he prayed earnestly over a space of three and a half years that there be no rain and then there was no rain and he prayed again and rain came that means there was nothing special as it were about elijah except that when he stepped into that dimension of priesthood he functioned like god are we together now this is very very important prayer is important one time jesus was with the disciples and having a conversation with peter he rebuked peter and said peter satan desired to sift you like wheat he didn't say i advised you he didn't say i counsel you so instability is remedied by prayer he has desired to sift you like wheat but i have prayed for you that your faith fail not he says when you are converted use this same strategy to strengthen your brethren that means when you see them swaying is proof that something is happening to their priesthood you must get them back to the point where they pray that men ought always to pray and not to faint that men ought always to pray and not to faint that men ought always to pray and not to faint one of the dominion systems allocated for the saints is the ministry of prayer it's a principle of spiritual legislature god gave us authority listen very carefully over principalities and powers and so on and so forth listen a believer who does not pray will not be able to walk in the full expression of the counsel of god this is true for many reasons number one because god gave man a will this is very important one of the fundamental things there are seven fundamental things god gave man not a believer man as the zenith of his creation one of it is the power to choose are we together i said before you blessing and cursing life and death i only advise you i will not force you so god gave man the power to choose the power to choose mandates that you must always god cannot assume that you need his assistance god cannot assume that you need help god cannot assume that you need the intervention of heaven you must verbalize your request you must verbalize your need you invite god to your life on legal basis even salvation is not imparted outside of your will he loves you and he's made the way but he will allow your desire and your hunger to call upon him the lord is nigh them that call upon him not them that need him them that call upon him are we together please so the fact that god gave man a will he is ever ever respectful of that will i can choose to ignore god i can choose as an act of my volition that lord i'm not interested in your program for my life and he will honor it at the expense of the eternal destiny of many god still allows them to declare their need for him there are people going to hell every day in spite of the fact that the substitutionary sacrifice of christ is a done deal are we together this is very very powerful prayer is important your priesthood is important because it is the system that outsources strength from a dimension that is not earthly number two prayer is the highest proof of humility because it's proof that you acknowledge you're incapacitated in yourself prayerlessness is pride when people are prayerless it is because they have found a way to flatter themselves into believing that outside of god they are still sufficient apostle paul was teaching us and he says we do not claim to be sufficient in ourselves he said he said our sufficiency is of god who has made us abled ministers 
when I go to God in prayer is a declaration of humility is proof that I need him is proof that I'm not trivializing his relevance in my life hallelujah we must pray as proof of humility the third reason why we must pray is that prayer is a spiritual system of transporting realities from the realm of the spirit to this realm it's a dominion system it's a system of spiritual legislature paul was giving us the the revelation on how spiritual things happen in hebrews chapter 11 the bible says now faith is the substance of things hoped for he calls it the evidence of things not seen are we still together he says for by it this faith this technology the elders obtained a good report and then verse 3 says through faith we understand that the cosmos the worlds were framed by the word of god okay now this is a technology so that things which are seen were not made of things which appear that means the mother that gives birth to the realm of the spirit or the physical realm is the realm of the spirit that everything that appears comes from a realm and a dimension that is higher than this realm listen believers please listen listen everything you need everything you imagine is only possible because it already exists what you call creation is only creation from this realm from the standpoint of the spirit is only transportation now this this is the basis upon which your faith is built so you are not hoping things will happen it's already a reality you only call it creation when it manifests in the earth realm but just because you have not seen it does not mean it does not exist the bible says why we look at the things which are seen or why we look not at the things which are seen but the things which are unseen unseen not unreal unseen just because your eyes cannot capture it in your space does not mean it's not there everything you are looking for is also looking for you there is a system to be able to transport it to your domain the ability to make what is far from you come to you is dominion are we together that the opportunity the open door the influence that is far from me i sustain an intelligence to compress time and bring it to myself now that's real dominion because everything we need for life and godliness has been provided for the bible did not say it was is within your domain but it's in the earth you must sustain the intelligence to draw things from wherever they are that was the morale of the miracle of the bones in ezekiel 37 it was a revelation to show you that the concept of distance is relative that there is a technology that can bring things that are apart and make sense of them are we blessed the principle of spiritual legislature that means i don't need to feel bad about what is not there there is an intelligence in the place of prayer i can call a helper in the place of prayer i can call opportunities i can create possibilities i can from the standpoint there it's true this is how the great rise it is vain to run away to pursue things individually you can coordinate them like a control room in the place of prayer knowing listen very carefully knowing that every physical thing every including men are only listen very carefully every physical thing in the earth is a reflection of what controls it are we together please let me have one person any one person at all come sir if this man comes to me to bless me hold this and give it to me if this man comes to me to bless me you think he just came he may even think he just came but the realm of the spirit says nobody just comes now listen very carefully it's impossible for him to just come because a body without a spirit is dead there must be an agency so i have sustained an advantage to manipulate possibilities to my domain without forcing them i can make this man bless me without manipulating him because i can talk to the father of spirits the father abba the owner the controller the manipulator of every spirit 
sit down are we together so this man comes he can leave and I don't feel sad because I can make him come again thy kingdom your influence favor lifting speed so in the place of prayer you coordinate these possibilities as though in a control room and you are there manipulating things and you come out and play life like a chess and you watch possibilities arrange themselves listen i'm not trying to motivate you this is priesthood the excellency the advantage of your being connected to the spirit is seen at the point of priesthood you define your possibilities hello him adonai thy kingdom come thy will be done hello him adonai thy kingdom come thy will be done hello him adonai thy kingdom come thy will be done listen the priesthood ministry of the believer allows you to define the possibilities that you desire to be in your life. You see, the realm of the spirit is like an actor script that is unedited. It takes your priesthood to choose which scenes. You, you know how you act a film, a movie. There are all kinds of scenes at the point of acting. But when the movie is released, you don't see some scenes again. Prayer gives you the opportunity to select what must manifest. In the realm of the spirit destruction is a possibility in the realm of the spirit speed is a possibility in the realm of the spirit delay is a possibility in prayer you have the opportunity to rise to a dimension and select the truths that are consistent with the character of scripture and allow this is what it means to bind and lose to allow for possibilities that must happen and it so happens that after a period of time if you do not select life was mandated to select for you and it's dangerous to outsource selection that is out of you will select things that you do not want to see priesthood hallelujah thank you sir the final reason i'll give it to you very quickly you won't believe that i've not even touched on what i want to share at all just no 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 we'll, we'll walk with time praise god now please look up the final reason why we must pray is found it's a very strange scripture that not many people um not many people look at first thessalonians chapter 2 please from verse 18 Paul was teaching the church in Thessalonica. He was showing them a very powerful mystery. Read it with me if you're a Christian. One, two, read, please. Uh-huh. One more time, please. Once and again. Meaning I tried and tried again wherefore your favor would have come to you he tried once and again but satan hindered us wherefore your testimony would have happened since last year march but once and again a system of resistance the bible is not silent as to the fact that we are not alone in this side of god's kingdom the bible is not silent as to the fact that there are operations of darkness that attempt to sabotage the liberty of the saints paul took time to give us a sound theological exegesis theologically speaking the book of ephesians is believed to be the zenith of paul's apostolic ministry and he showed us the the strategy strategy to ward off the arsenals of darkness are we together now wherefore we would have come we would have come your breakthrough your lifting the manifestation of prophecy but satan hindered us the bible lets us know that satan is not afraid to arise and challenge believers 
it is true from scripture that satan is bold enough to challenge every word that god communicates to a believer in fact the bible shows us the the operation of satan in a very instructive way jesus is done fasting look up please brothers and sisters i think i've shared it here somewhere jesus is done fasting and the first person he meets after his version of wine press is not his disciples is satan satan is patient with jesus and after 40 days imagine the word the logos of god with the holy ghost in him and on him anointed without measure now prays to fast for 40 days this spiritual combination and the first person he sees is satan and satan is not shaking and falling under the anointing satan is standing in front of jesus and he's the first to broker a conversation turn this stone to bread and the word is spoken now this is rema and satan does not fall he does not run away now i'm not downplaying the power of god i'm showing you something that should challenge you what exactly is satan afraid of because the word is there the spirit is there the anointing is there faith-filled utterances are there and satan is still standing then satan takes it to another dimension he holds the hand of jesus and takes him to a high mountain you are holding the word filled with the spirit and dragging him hello him adonai thy kingdom come thy will be done hello him adonai thy kingdom come listen to me everything good is why satan will come to you satan has no business coming to you until he sees that the jealousy of god has been invested towards your destiny he's looking for everything god wants when god looks at you he wants to know why when god zooms his attention on your family he wants to know why satan is threatened every time he sees the direction of god towards you i have loved you with an everlasting love i have drawn you with my loving kindness the moment jesus was born the spirit of the antichrist began to move through people to look for him to kill him he became uneasy the day a declaration came from heaven this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased hear ye him satan never looked for anybody again including barabbas he left barabbas quietly because he was looking for a man who was a representation of god in the earth please listen to me very carefully it is important to pray because it is at the point of priesthood that we we establish victory experientially hebrews chapter 2 from verse 5 paul was putting a very strong balance he was bringing the the psalm of david about man and he was teaching us something that we must understand for unto the angels are he not put in subjection the world to come whereof we speak verse 6 please but in a certain place he testified saying what is man that thou art mindful of him not the son of man that thou visitest him seven but thou hast made him lower than elohim the word there is elohim god himself not just angels thou crownest him with glory and honor listen and thou didst set him over the work of thy hands verse 8 thou hast put all things where in subjection under his feet for in that he put all things in subjection under him he left nothing this is the speakings of god you see how god speaks he left nothing that is not put under him but come back to this realm now we do not yet see all things reality is finished from god's standpoint but in experience we do not yet see it so priesthood becomes the bridge between prophecy and experience that that which is finished can find expression to become manifest hallelujah it is true 
that when you live your life barren of priesthood you may never never see and experience the salvation of god so jesus himself would get up early and go to pray the logos of god prayed the logos of god prayed he prayed every day he prayed every time even at his passion he prayed my house shall be called the house of prayer the house of priesthood not just the house of fellowship not just the house of teaching my house shall be called the house of prayer it was whilst the apostles prayed and fasted then the holy ghost spoke unto them and said separate me paul and barnabas we must pray because there are arsenals of darkness that continue to wage war against the victory of the saints and prayer becomes the platform to ward off these operations of darkness when you study the book of acts the bible tells us that one time james was beheaded herod beheaded james and it pleased the jews and then he caught peter and peter was kept he was bound hand in chain and then he was uh, there were all kinds of military people around but the bible says the church prayed the moment the church prayed the bible records that an angel came and when he came he tapped peter picked peter and begin and, and, and he began to walk him out until he got to the iron gates that led to the city and then peter was thinking he was in a vision until he got back prayer when done with understanding is powerful we're talking of priesthood here is god blessing anybody yes one day things will change is a joke it will take priesthood to manipulate possibilities and turn your night to day. Time does not change anything. Time only reveals. It will take your insistence. In fact, here's how the Bible puts it. Resist the devil. Resist the devil. He will not flee because he wants to. There is a resistance. I desire to come to you once and again. Even I, Paul... But Satan hindered us. I hate to be a bearer of bad news. But just because prophecy comes does not mean it will manifest. This charge I give unto you, my son Timothy, that you war a good warfare with the prophecy. With the prophecy. With the prophecy. The word of God has come upon my life this year that I am the head and not the tail. I understand there is a devil somewhere who will want to take advantage of my background. He will want to take advantage of the fact that my family is not connected to influential people to manipulate me. But I stand in the position of priesthood to veto those disadvantages. That's prayer. That's priesthood. Many believers pray but few believers understand priesthood most of our prayers for many believers is just full of wise sayings and all kinds of things god why me that's not prayer are we together heaven helps those who um, help themselves that's that's not you see some of those things are very emotional things but they are, that's not prayer there are times that you will need to stand like habakkuk and pray stand upon your watch set yourself upon the tower you can know when things begin to go in a way and manner that is not consistent with the character of the christ that's not the time to discuss that's not the time to hope even if you don't know what is going on you filter the error you filter what is happening is in the place of prayer you will gain clarity the Bible says one time the apostle, listen very carefully, that the apostle had escaped from um, the island called Melita. Remember, he told the people there shall be no loss. And then the Bible says that the ship went and settled in an island called Melita. And when they came out because it was cold, they were trying to enjoy the fire. And the Bible says he was there with them and a viper. The viper was hiding, but it was the fire that made the viper come out. The viper was there in the log, but it was hiding. So when that prayer comes, it can mount pressure on the viper to reveal itself. 
the devil can be hiding around your finances hiding around your family it will take fire upon that wood to reveal the viper is God speaking to us priesthood when believers do not understand this idea of priesthood they become weak they continue to hope that things will happen they continue to write down prophecies they continue to just mesmerize around prophecies and the word of God and it never gains ground men ought to pray and not to faint it is priesthood priesthood when you pray I need assistance from a realm and a dimension that is higher than the three-dimensional realm and you are able to call upon God and the Lord is nigh them that call upon him Jeremiah 33 and verse 3 says call unto me and I will answer I will answer not I will come I will answer in response to your call then I will show you great and mighty things that you do not know great and mighty things that you do not know when you pray things begin to shift in your life listen you an attack on your prayer life is a real attack listen very carefully it's an attack on your priesthood it's not just an attack on your spirituality it's an attack on your priesthood you will never be able to walk in the experience of dominion when you do not have a track record of prayer are we together yes spiritual legislature in the name of Jesus I call for destiny help us in the name of Jesus I declare my path is as a shining light it shines ever brighter this is priesthood you are in your room in the name of Jesus I program January I program February no chances no excuses I program it I declare by the Spirit of the Living God the job is coming I'm speaking listen you are not just you are not just doing some Pentecostal nonsense the word of a king has power the Bible tells you In the name of Jesus ah, the hand of God is upon my life I'm called Beulah Hefzibah you expect to be favored are we together and suddenly someone wakes up from his bed and starts thinking about you no sir people don't just think about people the spirit of god is moving in honor to your priesthood and now he's causing someone who has forgotten you three years five years how are you how is everything and you say fine you are not surprised you knew what you did how are you um it's been a while i hear you are in lagos where do you live and the holy spirit speaks to him that's not the issue give him the house I hope you I hope you 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 know that I'm not just joking I'm not just it is true you see let me tell you when you understand priesthood your life becomes a miracle and a wonder first to you and then to those who see you because physically looking at you you will not add up but you will operate by a mystery that will continue to scare people this is listen 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 this is what makes galatians 1 24 a wonder that men will glorify god in you not just for you not just through you you have become an extension of spiritual possibilities that vetoes your background vetoes anything that is supposedly a disadvantage what then is the excellency of the ministry of the holy spirit what then is the advantage of the word all of the spiritual arsenals that the saints have this is what makes us a chosen generation a peculiar people our exposure to marvelous light the light of priesthood i'm not disadvantaged it's true and it's not just by shouting it you can shout it and remain there for many years until you finally say look it looks like i'm, I'm really disadvantaged <laughs> and we will never settle for less we know there's more that's found in you huh. and we will never settle for less we know 
There's more that's found in you. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. We know there's more that's found in you. Let me show you one dimension of priesthood and then we'll pray. Have, have you been blessed so far? The Bible says priesthood is about sacrifice. Now listen very carefully. Priesthood is about sacrifice. Now most times believers, even those who teach about sacrifice, whether it's finance or what service in the house of God, the truth is that respectfully speaking, most times we teach it from a fleshly standpoint. And so it does not provide the power that the Bible says should come from it. Are we together? When Peter had a vision and he was sent to the house of Cornelius, the testimony that led to that encounter was the fact that the prayers of Cornelius and then his giving. Watch this, please. Please understand this. You will bless God and you will thank me for this revelation that I give you. It will be a powerful tool that you will close and open doors with. The priesthood of believers when you make spiritual intercession when you command possibilities listen carefully listen carefully please the bible gives us a very powerful mystery in the book of revelation that the old heaven and the old earth will one day pass away now this is powerful a physical space will one day move to where we do not know so automatically we know that physical scenarios can move they are living things are we together a life and a destiny that is full of pain is a physical scenario akin to an old heaven and an old earth that there is a technology that can move a sin out of a man's life and bring another one follow me please now he says that in terms of the new jerusalem but it's a principle you must understand that means that i must find a way and i can find a way to close certain seasons in my life and open others if the old heaven and the old earth can go away then it means anything in my life i can choose that the time has come for a phase of my life to go away and i want to show you the technology that controls that outcome pray in the spirit for one minute please pray in the spirit for one minute in the name of jesus I pray that you will use this truth and reprogram your life and turn your life and your destiny into a wonder please let me have your attention for a few minutes we're going to pray Genesis 8 22 please look up the Bible says that when the earth was judged the earth was judged with flood flood is one of the elements of the supernatural is water and then the animals came and Noah offered it was a sacrifice please look up of all of the clean beasts he offered sacrifice and then the lord smelled a sweet savour from it and made a proclamation that is very very prophetic it says while the earth so the earth is involved in this talk look up please while the earth remains seed time and harvest and cold and heat 
and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease it's an ordinance that came from the mouth of god are we together now that seed time and harvest shall not cease now watch this the principle of what in the body of it's been known for many years and not many people have understood it is called the principle of seed faith listen very carefully please listen great men like Ora Roberts and Kenneth E Hagin and great fathers of faith patriarchs who have gone transited in glory they did their best to explain it as best as they understood but remember revelation is progressive are we together now yes so they communicated the perspectives that God gave to them. But one of the advantage of the apostolic and the prophetic ministry is that you are given illumination by the spirit to see. And then you are granted the grace that can make all men see. Ephesians 3 is a grace that makes men see. Not just men here. Men see. Insight, illumination, understanding. Now please look up the principle of seed faith please look up you're about to learn something that will change your life forever the principle of seed faith is the only principle that is able to mimic what jesus did jesus said verily verily i say unto you he said except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies it abides alone are we bible students and that means that the principle of resurrection is such that the seed dies not that the seed enters the ground Entering the ground is not death. Death, therefore, is not the cessation of life. It is the gateway into another realm. We call it the cessation. Listen, listen, listen. Listen, you have to understand this. That means the door that leads to life is called death. Death is not a dead end. Death is a door. When you want to go into life, you follow the door called death. Now, watch this. That means watch this please oh dear when jesus was about to end a dispensation and begin another one he followed the door of death are we together now and in dying in his resurrection he brought many sons into glory do we agree now that is the same principle that happens with your seed the bible says that when you sow a seed and agriculture attests to the fact that when you sow a seed for a while that seed follows that door too you call it death it literally dies and then suddenly something begins to happen another life are we together now and then it produces after its kind are we together now the principle of seed faith is based on death and resurrection not money that means whatever is tied to that seed as the seed dies it must die are you getting the point now i can take everything in my life my trouble my pain my frustration and tie it to the seed the moment the seed dies the law declares that that dimension of my life must follow the seed to the grave and die too so i can end seasons in my life and open another one and the mystery here is found in um, first corinthians 15 please look at this verse 38 that god is able to give your seed another body this is still priesthood i can end shame and not have more shame as a harvest god can change the body of what died and make it laughter because seeds should produce after their kind but that there is a technology because there are some things you want to kill you don't just want more of look at this when you sow corn it's because you want more corn are we together now when you sow rice it's because you want more rice but there are times in the technology of God there are times you sow certain things to kill them not because you want more of them and so that your faith can reconvert that manifestation so that it is not what died that comes out as the harvest god is able to 
give your seed another body that means i can sow shame i can sow delay and tie it to a seed and bury it as that seed dies my shame too dies my delay dies now i'm not going to get more delay as a harvest i may get speed god can reprogram that delay and what will come as a harvest is speed this is priesthood we can use seeds with understanding to end seasons and open others but god giveth it a body as it had pleased him and to every seed its own body i can sow in tears and not reap more tears i can reap joy it's, it looks like a deviation of the law because every seed gives birth after its kind if i sow shame i should reap more shame but you can sow it because you want to kill it listen there are things in your life that need to come to an end and i'm telling you just saying it must come to an end is not enough he programmed the earth as a system of advantage for you that you can carry a seed with understanding not manipulation with understanding and begin to list the seasons that must come to an end if the old earth and the old heaven can pass away then everything in your life can also pass away so you can end seasons lord i do not experience favor in my life i move forward but by struggle that scenario is like an old heaven and an old earth you can tie it to a seed that's why i said it somewhere and um, let me say it here it is dangerous to steal money in the house of god because you don't know what who is killing with the seed is dropping if you pick a seed that has not died what is on it is also alive hmm. it's true you see what went wrong with judas because people were sowing seeds and Judas was helping himself Judas did not just die of frustration many things killed him someone's suicidal thoughts was sown away in that seed and he kept receiving it and did not allow it die your seed can program certain seasons in your life it is still part of priesthood now the, the the challenge is that because i guess because most seeds come as money and and so most people think that it is just a church manipulation to extract seeds from people now respectfully speaking i know that here and there sometimes people do not approach this subject of seed with integrity and and all of that but that does not mean that the principle is not true there are people who are long overdue to enter certain strong seasons and if god sowed jesus to get us then it is important for you to understand that you can bury certain seasons and open up others and there are times that god can give speed please hear what i'm telling you the things i tell you are the things that i do i have ended seasons in my life and open others it's not just the will of god you enforce it through priesthood remember that priesthood is about sacrifice the sacrifice of spiritual legislation in prayer the sacrifice of warfare in prayer and dram your spiritual climate using the power and the technology of the seed it is true and it works that you can choose to say lagos is a place of abundance and blessings and god is a god of portions that means there is a portion allocated for me rehoboth there is a space that has been given to me but it is refusing to come and so you can call forth all of the lack the limitation and tie them to a seed as that seed dies you start rejoicing because you are looking forth for the harvest it works wonders and it is true the integrity of god is at the back of it many people have unconsciously receive testimonies from these principles and you just hear them say look i was tired i was tired and then i saw the seed and things change but god is adding to our understanding it is not the money that brings you the sacrifice it is the priesthood the revelation of priesthood that is back of it 
is what is responsible the second reason why the ministry of priesthood is powerful is because you see the anointing the word anoint is an ordination it's a system of authorization that allows you to function in an office it was an ancient system that was used for kings priests prophets to anoint doesn't just mean to spare with oil to anoint means to legitimize your operation are we together now that means that you are not illegal as far as that function is concerned there is a throne in heaven that backs your operation that's what it means to anoint so when the bible says how god anointed jesus he was authorized to function in that office of the christ when the saints are anointed we are given authorization on legal grounds the sons of Sceva were not anointed by the Holy Spirit. That was why the demon said, no, this operation, although you used to get results, but it's still illegal because the Holy Ghost is not the sponsor of it. There is no legitimate ground upon which you should operate that way. Are we together now? And now, please watch this. Listen very carefully. When, when the anointing of the Holy Spirit is his ability at work in a man is god's very ability at work in a man now watch this please the anointing and all kinds of graces are in dimensions and they are in levels anointing is not general anointing just because you are anointed does not mean anointed once and it can solve every problem that's not accurate are we together now that's not accurate if that were so the disciples would not need to be filled with the holy spirit again and the bible would not make reference to the lavish dimension of jesus is being anointed how god anointed jesus it took out time to tell us the extent of the anointing please watch this i've shared it here i think maybe at, at the bagada church or so in one of the conferences that the anointing is in levels and the level of anointing that you possess or a servant of God possesses also reflects the dimensions of spiritual problems that can be solved just because you are anointed does not mean every problem is within your jurisdiction to solve in experience now you have to understand this please let me have two gentlemen make sure they are workers also please just come okay yes you come you come sir thank you look at this look at this now this guy is in need of favor open doors this guy is in need of healing i can have the anointing the grace for favor and the grace for healing but not to the degree that can solve this man's financial problems i can pray for him it is the limit of my grace that will be at work in him even if he falls down and stands up are you getting what i'm saying now i can and the the worst part of it is i can have the healing anointing alone if i pray for this guy he will fall down but what he wants is result in the area of prosperity he will stand up and every other remaining challenge in his body will be solved but the issue of the finance cannot be answered because the grace the dimension the anointing of the spirit works within the jurisdiction of his allocation any anointing does not solve any problem no no there are dimensions this is where impartation and other things come remember joshua was already filled with the spirit but moses was told to lay hands on him again are we together now yes so i can solve this man's problem and pray for him and say in the name of jesus let doors be open and nothing happens and you find out that all that continues to happen around my life is that people are healthy they live long they live strong but they are broke it's a reflection of the deficiency of the dimension of grace at work in my life now when that grace comes it will speak immediately now let's 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 change it both of them are trusting god for higher dimensions of maybe spiritual encounters or finances or whatever and i can have that anointing but not to that level we are two preachers respectfully speaking listen carefully let's say myself and let me use a great figure like benny Hinn, you know or um tl osborne of blessed memory he's gone now these are fathers with proven track records are we together now now i can pray for this man 
in the name of Jesus be healed in the name of Jesus let the cancer go I'm calling the name of Jesus I'm a sincere believer I'm anointed the Holy Ghost is at work in me and you'll be surprised the cancer does not leave and this guy will come and sit in a Benihin conference where he's just talking to leaders and the cancer leaves now watch this the difference is not the it's not God it's not God the same Lord is rich unto all but something the there is the level of anointing it's like money if you have 10,000, you can eat lunch, but you cannot buy a car. If you are hungry, rejoice because you have enough for it. But if you want a car, start crying because you will need more. Are we together now? So conferences like this create systems of upgrade. Where you can get higher dimensions of the same grace. And then other, I mean, higher levels of the same grace and other dimensions that are missing in your life. You can know what is on you by the results that are around you. Listen to me. Everything that happens around you is a report card, an attestation to the grace that you carry. This is true. Imagine this. I can be walking with this gentleman. Watch this and then this man meets with me come sir and he chooses to ignore this one and he blesses me and then he passes i think he just blessed me no what was on me was programming my climate although we are close we will not get the same result are we together now you see that there was something on me that was calling for favor from him so although yes sir although i'm holding the hand of this one and we're walking together i pray in the name of jesus that we understand what i'm teaching that way we will minimize wasting our time trying to outsource things physically realities are programmed the realm of the spirit is that powerful that what manifests in the physical realm there is a grace when you carry a generation must hear you it is not just because listen 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 it's not just because you are the greatest preacher you can have all the anointing in the world and a generation will ignore what you are saying there is an anointing that makes hear ye him a possibility a verdict from heaven that will compel every territory to hear your voice there is a grace that calls for destiny help us they don't just come no they don't just come they know you just because you are holding the hand of a multi-millionaire he can look at you and you can even go to the restaurant with him and pay for your food he's not greedy what is on you is not allowing him bless you because the same man will leave you and go to another person and say please can i have the privilege of giving you a car so he's a giver not to you but to the one who carries the grace Let me tell you this there is nobody that is greedy is what is on you that is programming your possibilities it's true priesthood where we don't sit down just begin to complain why is this not happening my business is not growing no the world has about 7.2 billion people that's enough bodies for God to use to bless you that's enough bodies for God. 6.7.2 billion people cannot forget you. Someone has to remember you, but it's what is on you. Apostle, why is it that people do not listen to what I'm saying? It's because you only have what to say. You have not gotten what will make men listen. I will never be the same i've touched your grace my life must change i will never be the same i've touched your grace my life must change i will never be the same i've touched your grace my life must change i will never be the same I'm not the one who's always right.
I will never be the same. I've touched your grave. My life must change. 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 Please listen, HICC. Let this wine press be the one that will shift you into dimensions and realms that will turn you into a sign and a wonder listen there is no dimension and hear me when i tell you this it is true there is no dimension of possibilities there is no dimension of dominion that you cannot command the key is not to chase after things no everything in life was designed to be attracted to be drawn by the mysteries of the kingdom and that which i show you tonight is called priesthood is the mystery of dominion the saints reign we program the spiritual climate over us you pick favor from the realm of the spirit add it to january to december you pick speed add it to january to december speak open door add it january to december program every good thing to wait till you are there before it shows up if you are not there then it is allowed to be delayed till you show up priesthood who are thou mountain before zerubbabel that stands before you my brothers and my sisters i don't mean to insult your intelligence but what is in a job that god cannot give you listen listen I, I don't mean to be sarcastic it is true every day there are people looking for people to bless in this city what is stopping them from reaching you it is not distance i guarantee you it is not distance and it is not familiarity because gentiles will come to your light not your familiar friends no when those who know you bless you it's difficult to say it's god but when strangers feed your flock then you know that it's a dimension of grace where you wake up in the morning and you collide with all kinds of breakthroughs by evening you return back home and say my god have i not been in lagos and people say ah your season has come you say you are right but it's not time that brought it priesthood opened me to another vista of spiritual possibility it's true we are going to pray and i i want find a way of believing what i share with you tonight your pastor allowed for this meeting so that you are shifted to another dimension whatever he does prospers it doesn't just prosper because he wants it to prosper it is what is on your head that is controlling what is around your life priesthood that you can pray your way up to date down tomorrow spiritually lord i fold that season like a curtain out of my life priesthood the power of legislature what kind of dream is this that i always have every time i'm supposed to be lifted i see myself in secondary school i see myself in my former house no i don't know what it means but i know this is evil because the bible says the path of the justice has a shining light and you use priesthood blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance that spoke against us that he nailed his cross That every good thing starts in my life but doesn't end but the bible says he has turned my morning into dancing not dancing into morning he has turned my sorrow into joy and so you you step back and and take away your priest your your regalia and put that regalia of priesthood it's time to pray it's time to rearrange possibilities it's time to manipulate realities to send angels to send the ministry of the holy spirit to homes to systems to structures compelling them to bow to the lordship of the christ
hallelujah please listen i know there may be many pastors following online and so on and so forth why is my church not growing why is growth epileptic i have a message i'm a man of character and integrity i love the lord with all my heart what is this thing that is making people not grow no people do not just come they are compelled to come there is a grace that compels people it's called anakazo is the, it's the ability of the spirit he he called for a feast and he sent to call people and they were giving excuses one said i just married i need to spend time with my wife another said i built a house i need to celebrate he said go to the street and the byways and compel them compel them listen to me listen there are dimensions you must enter but there are graces that is like that that expansion has not happened you can expand yourself like the molting of a snake come out of your old self into another dimension that sustains the power to command real results lord what is wrong with me i love god but i prophesy and every every case i mention is not true i say you are you're john i say i'm not john something is wrong i'm a prophet but it's not speaking get to the position of priesthood and pray out that shell of the flesh until there is a heavy investment of the spirit you come out from that place of priesthood and you become a blazing fire an inferno of fire Haya, 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 you're a man of God in ministry here let me give you an honest counsel going around and giving cards for invitation and saying invite me I'm a man of God you will only mock yourself go back to the secret place the place where men are made for a generation and generate the kind of energy that defies being ignored that vetoes your background that vetoes your limitations pray yourself until you intercourse with an anointing a grace that a generation recognizes pray until an investment of the spirit comes upon you you call me into the ministry of signs and wonders lord my life cannot be buried manta salas kaparata e preketekete baratos makaparakato seketekete pray hcic stalabaratakat shobadasia prisu 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 encounter with power prisu encounter with authority the grace to change nations the grace to shift systems the grace to hold structures listen 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 my dear brothers and sisters hear me it is because the challenges in our lives have not met authentic priesthood that's why they remain are we together now yes sir the day you take the matters in your destiny serious you will melt it like wax before the fire because the bible says he maketh his angels wings and his ministers flames of fire you can pray your way priesthood while men sleep you are praying skaparush kanata lagos hear the word of the lord i stand as a priest i legislate from leki to vi to
to Ikeja, I call forth my helpers. I call forth the way makers used by God. I decree and declare no more delay. I program speed. I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost. I am Beulah and Hephzibah. I cannot be denied. Cannot be denied. Not on grounds of sentiments. Not on grounds of gender. I stand as one who has been helped by God. Hela parus kanakatos. Fito your background. Fito your limitations. Let priesthood become your advantage. Advantage in the spirit. Advantage in destiny. That the opening of your mouth is the opening of the gates of the destinies of men. Someone open your mouth and pray. Cry to the God of heaven. Wine press. Let the maker make you. Let your priesthood speak tonight. song for me please the Lord who are rounding up please look at me listen to me you're going to pray just two prayer points and we're done for the night you're going to challenge the Bible says listen to me it says for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds is a casting down every imagination is the word yes sir the vain imaginations of men and bringing every thought to the obedience of Christ you are going to pray this is priesthood now are we together now you are going to pray and declare that everything that is not consistent with the character of God and the speakings of prophecy hear the word of the Lord I come as one sent anointed by God and you will lift your voice and begin to make decrees the Bible says declare ye that thou mightest be justified lift your voice and pray make decrees speak speak to systems speak to structures are there men of prayer here I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Ghost Lagos, hear my voice. Someone is praying. Bagada, hear my voice. Ikeja, hear my voice. Leki, hear my voice. Africa, hear my voice. I speak in the name of Jesus. Every barrier be torn down by the power of the Holy Ghost. Every climate above me, programming woes, programming delay, stopping a generation from hearing your voice, manipulating your influence across a territorial space. I come against you in the name of Jesus. Someone is praying. Someone is praying over your ministry. I challenge powers over your business. I confront spirits in the name of Jesus. By the blood of the eternal covenant, I silence speakings. I silence ordinances. I silence
silence operations in the name of Jesus. look at me it was the psalmist in Psalm 3 that says many are they that rise up against me it says many are they that say where is thy God but then it says but thou O Lord that you are a shield for me then it says you are my glory and he uses the next prayer point you are the lifter of my head it says my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of an unicorn even when the head of a unicorn is down the horn is not down the horn remains up at all times and i shall be anointed with fresh oil please listen listen i want you to take this prayer session seriously you are going to pray lord the grace the anointing the unction for the next level of my life the compelling ability of the spirit that must rest upon me and will resonate like an earthquake across a territory the inferno of fire that must come upon my life and turn me to a wonder i receive it now lift your voice and begin to pray the grace that will make my music ministry step into another dimension for the sake of his majesty the grace that will make my business become a wonder and praise the grace that will make my church and ministry a wonder and end that praise oh god that, that help the son of the living God I decree and I declare over everyone here and all the branches and all connected online I pray by the ministry of the Spirit in the name of Jesus may mighty anointing come upon your life and shift you to a new dimension in the name of Jesus Christ the spirit of prayer and supplication that will grant you the grace to travail i declare by the hand of god let it rest upon you now these three women i'm not ministering this night but these three women i'm seeing oil being poured on all three of them help them please new dimension i shift you in the spirit new dimension 
new dimension new dimension take that fire new dimension dimension of power dimension of grace i amplify your voice i give your products wings in the spirit i command the generation to hear your voice i place something upon your life that defies being denied i forbid you from being rejected i decree and declare 2020 expand 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 i speak by the spirit expand at the choir expand move to new levels expand increase increase in knowledge increase in prosperity increase in influence increase in wisdom of raising ambassadors of the kingdom we live in a time in history when we need to understand the dealings of God across the nations and for us to be relevant in the kingdom we must look beyond ourselves hallelujah we cannot at this point just be looking for bread to eat water to drink the purposes of the kingdom is bigger than that. And so we must stretch our desire for spiritual things to be beyond us and begin to look at the kingdom. Praise the Lord. Tonight, we are going to be examining the Antichrist system, the structure, Babylon. Hallelujah. Please, I want you to pay attention. The goal of the series, The Emergence, is to bring us to a point where we realize that the church is God's strategy. The church is not just an institution. It is a strategy. It is the name given to God's strategy. The apostolic and prophetic strategy that will establish the victory that was shared upon the cross. Hallelujah. And... Um, I began to tell us that there is a prophecy upon our lives and upon our generation. Understanding that prophecy and knowing how to walk with it becomes the key to being relevant in this season. Hallelujah. So we are going to be examining the system. There is a system. There is a kingdom. Please follow me. There is an operation of darkness. Whether or not you believe it, there is a system that has been at the fabric of human civilization. Hallelujah. And this system has evolved itself through time. Hallelujah. Masquerading itself in secrecy, evolving through human civilization. But one and the same system hallelujah because you see the contention of light and darkness is unto one goal an advocacy of an allegiance what you see happening in the world system today is the continuation of the desire of satan he began this from the heavens and was judged and all through time everything that has happened in human history is a contention of light and darkness to the end that the allegiance of mankind be submitted to an entity called Satan. And if we do not understand the happenings of this system, we will not, you see, the, the circumference of our understanding must transcend beyond healing. If, come, if this gentleman is sick and has cancer for instance and i lay my hands upon him and i say be healed and he's healed of the cancer um as good as that is it falls short of that which god desires for us to know are you getting me because the cancer in is in his body because of an ancient story that predates even his existence are you getting what i'm saying we are in the middle of prophecy we are in the middle of history and we must understand why the contention 
why is the devil determined to oppress your family why is the devil determined to stop you from marriage or stop you from giving birth is it just because he doesn't like you is that all is that all to the story why the aggression and the hostility from hell why does the devil want you poor and broke just because he doesn't want you to have a house no you see that there is an ancient story that predates our existence and we are just in the middle of history and we must come to a point where we are taught and we understand we must connect to history then we will be able to appreciate what Jesus did on the cross and then we will be able to know our roles as individuals and as a church in returning the Christ bless you hallelujah thank you Jesus open our eyes in the name of Jesus Christ Daniel Daniel lived in a time that was very prophetic very strategic the book of Daniel is an adumbration a foreshadowing of the church our mandate our assignment and the book of Daniel, theologically speaking, gives us the clearest explanation about the system of Babylon. Now, the Antichrist system over time has carried different names. Egypt, Babylon, Jezebel, the world system. Hallelujah. Regardless of the name you call it, it is one and the same system led by the same agenda it has not changed strategies have evolved through civilization but it has been one and the same so daniel found himself in a land of captivity alongside his friends you know in a place called babylon and it was during the time of a king called nebuchadnezzar kings in those days were like gods they were literally gods Aside from their physical stature, like Og, the king of Bashan, he was said to be a Nephilim, a giant. Hallelujah. Nebuchadnezzar was a very amazing king. And the Bible tells us that at a point, he had a dream. And it was a strange dream. Can you help me with the fan? Please, it's really shifting my Bible. Just shift it away from me. Thank you. Hallelujah. Nebuchadnezzar had a dream and called all his sorcerers and said, I need the meaning of this dream. And when he was angry that they could not interpret the dream, he said, go and kill them. And Daniel said, no, not so. Don't be hasty. Give me time. Hallelujah. Give me time and the interpretation will come. And the Bible says, then the secret was revealed unto Daniel. And in the description of what Daniel saw, he saw an entity made of the head of gold i'm just rushing so that we'll get to the core of the teaching the head was made of gold right the chest was made of silver is that true from the stomach region down to the thigh it was made of bronze and then he began to describe that the feet was a mixture of of iron you know the, the legs were iron and then the feet was both iron and clay now it was a revelation of different dispensations that would come and daniel began to speak to the king that dispensations would begin to come it was it was a revelation of different appearances of the structure of this babylon a godless system hallelujah but then let me just recap a bit to help us understand the bible makes us to understand that a lot happened in the garden of eden hallelujah i know that we know about the old story i've shared it again and again here but maybe for the benefit of those who have not been here for a long time let me just recap again how that the story between mankind and the devil and darkness is an ancient story is that true and i did tell us how that satan is not the opposite of god it's important for us to understand this because what we call eternity is the summation of infinite dispensations is that true 
and that there was a dispensation where Satan did not exist. Is that true? Satan was created out of the predeterminate wisdom of God. There was a dispensation in time where he did not exist. Hallelujah. Job 38 begins to give us um, a lot of, of, of revelations when God was speaking with Job. Now, when Satan came on board, I told you that the office of Satan in heaven was what? The custodian. The name Satan is not the name of an entity. The name Satan, Satan, means accuser. Right? And devil means what? Deceiver. So he said you shall cast out devils. It's not the name of a person. It's a generic name. Praise the Lord. And then the Bible makes us to understand how that um, this being was created and according to the order of his fashion because your office in heaven determines both your instrument of creation right and the kind of service you are going to bring and so lucifer was meticulously created using sound piped stringed instruments and i hope you realize that lucifer's jurisdiction of operation was the garden of eden remember I told you the Garden of Eden was not created for Adam. The Garden of Eden existed long before Adam. Are we there? Lucifer was in the Garden of Eden. The very Garden of Eden was his habitation. And the Garden of Eden was not in the earth. I hope you know. It's still intact. There, there are different planes of heaven as we are taught in the Bible. The heaven of heavens is where God dwells. But there are many other planes. Those planes are still existent today. Is that true? Are we following now? I just want us to get the background so that we will understand this concept. You see, when you understand this, there are certain levels of spiritual authority you will stand upon. It will no longer be a guesswork or trying to jack yourself into their reality. Light has brought you into that truth. Some things no longer will exist because you have found something that is true. Are we following now? And so, on the strength of Lucifer's office being the light bearer, he had access to the presence of God. And let me say it again, I'm just doing a recap. I've taught us how that angels grow by what? Excelling in light. Is that true? That's how you measure the age. In the realm of the spirit, we don't age like time. There is no time. So you measure the age of spirit beings by how much they've had access to the throne room. Because every time you meet God, there is an emission, a rub off of his glory upon you. Right? And even in heaven, you do not visit the throne room every time. Because even at that realm, the glory of God is too strong for you to come and stay there. Access is granted unto you. Praise the Lord. And so, because of Lucifer's function, Lucifer means the light bearer, the custodian of the revelations of the heavens. He had unusual access to the presence of God and it increased his beauty and his light. Even among the cherubims, right? He was the most valued. Because you see, before man was created, the order of heaven is the trinity now the father the son and the holy spirit but he was not called father i hope you know he only became father when jesus became son is that true so he was not called father god almighty jesus was called the word his name still is the word hallelujah and then the spirit of god so the organization was god now as we know father son and the holy spirit we have the angelic keda right and then the head of the angels are the seraphs. The head of the seraphs are the cherubims. And the head of the cherubims was God. So directly after the cherubims, I mean God was the cherubims. Are you seeing that? So that access. But now when God created man, what happened? He took man, making him equal, right? With himself, the order changed. So now the head of the seraphs is the cherubim. The head of the cherubim is the woman. The head of the woman is the man. And the head of man is God. Christ. Now and the head of Christ is God. 
this is the structure are you getting the point now when you understand the proximity between the cherubims and women you will know why many women are under the influence of strong spirits hallelujah that's that's for another teaching you, you see you see that they seem to be the most vulnerable there is a reason it's not just because they are ladies Get the teachings they are all available praise the lord and so this rebellion was led watch this the bible begins to tell us in ezekiel um, 28 and isaiah 14 the manifesto of satan he said i will exalt myself above the stars of god right he says i will be like the most high that's what he said what do you think would have given satan audacity to want to replace god to be equal with God means to be a partaker of his nature. To be equal to God means you can replace him. That's what Lucifer wanted. Are you, are you understanding my story? And so he mobilized a lot of the angels in heaven. Apollyon, Leviathan, Baal, Mammon. All these were spirits. Mobilized them in a rebellion to fight. I'm, I'm just doing a quick recap. There's, there are teachings already on that. And for them to fight, they needed to change their original estate. That's what the Bible says. Original estate means your default position of creation. Because in heaven, um, how many of you have seen, uh, maybe doctors when they are going for surgery, they put on their lab coat, right? There is an attire they wear because of their function. That's how it is in heaven. You don't wear clothes like this. Uh -uh. The, the garments in heaven change according to what you are doing. So if you are going to the throne room, you wear a garment called praise. It's not just a song. It's a garment. The psalmist saw it, right? <laughs> he said he will give you a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Is that true? And so for these spirits to carry out their treason, they needed to leave their original state of creation. So that they will assume a structure that will be able to afford them that which happened. And this was shown to John in the Isle of Patmos. He said there was war in heaven. And what happened? Lucifer, that rebellious entity, attempting to fight because he had known all the mysteries of God by reason of being the custodian of the mysteries. And he said, if this is all God is, then I've read everything. I know every possibility that can be in God. Are you getting my point? And when there was that fight, the Bible says, woe to the inhabitants of the earth when he prevailed not. Remember? Revelations. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth for the devil, that old serpent has been cast down and he comes with anger and great fury. Now, the meaning of that is this. When it was obvious that Satan and his cohort, a third of the angels, the Bible tells us, would not prevail. In their bid to run back to their original estate, they were trapped from the heavenlies. Are you getting me? Never to be like they were again. And never to be like mankind. So by default, the devil and all his entities are in a perpetual state of torture. Aside from anything. So they cannot be in a state of rest. Are you getting what I'm saying? It is, it is in the character of darkness to run to and fro. The book of Job. When he asked him, he said, from whence comes that? What did he say? Running to and fro. Jesus gave us a revelation that when a spirit leaves a man, what happens? That means if they can find expression in human vessels on the strength of the fact that man is the highest of God's creation, they can assume some position of rest. Are you getting what I'm saying? And so Lucifer led that rebellion. And when it did not happen, he was cast down to the earth. Watch this. And something happened. Because you see, perfect love cast out fear. And if God is love for casting Lucifer, he must justify the fact that he was not insecure. And so he created man and gave man everything to prove that it was not because he was afraid like a politician fighting his rival. Are you getting him? Are you getting the story now? So he created man. 
angels were created from light but man was made from the dust of the earth and the bible says god took his very cupboard that image what satan died fighting for and put in the man my goodness and then he made him in charge of everything when that was happening lucifer was watching hey lucifer was not somewhere moving around lucifer had access to watch he saw the creation of man are you getting what i'm saying and when he saw man he saw god authorize him and give him the seat of dominion and then in eden lucifer's very habitation that was where man was kept are you saying that it's an old story you just know that something happened your father got up in the morning one leg could not move it's an old story it's, it's not just the issue of healing anointing it's about understanding the agenda of god and let me tell you when you know this you will do more miracles unconsciously because there is a light from you that will emit everywhere you go you become a true advocate of the kingdom hallelujah Are you following me now? And so Lucifer in that situation came and started beguiling man. And I told you that what happened in the Garden of Eden was a foreshadowing of redemption. Is that true? Because the Bible tells us that authority was given to Adam, the man. Is that true? But Eve was made out of his nature. So she was a partaker of the man's nature. Are you getting the point now? And so when that happened, they had dominion together satan ultimately wanted to take off the dominion and the only way he would take off the dominion watch this if god created man in his image right and put that man as the highest of his creation then it means if that man bows to satan what is he saying in essence if i am equal with christ and i bow to you i have accepted that satan is greater than him are you getting the whole dynamics of what happened in the garden and so for him to do that, he came through woman. Watch this. I want to explain to you a very powerful mystery. Please follow me. Adam did not fall by mistake. First Peter tells us. It was the woman who was deceived, not the man. Let me tell you why Adam fell. Adam fell because according to God's system of love, you have to love unto death to prove that you love. Are you getting what I'm saying? Husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church. Now that the woman had fallen, the man had to follow her because of love. That's why for Jesus to redeem us, he needed to come down and be like us. The same way Adam left his estate to be like his wife. Are you following me now? Are you getting the whole thing? So Adam was not deceived. When he fell, immediately God looked from the heavens and saw the throne that he put man upon empty and when he saw that throne it was on account of that he said adam where are you he wasn't just saying adam are you naked what happened now you don't you know you are an adult that's not what he was saying hallelujah he saw the throne it was a spiritual position of dominion and when he saw it he said adam where are you adam said i had to follow this woman and god did not rebuke him because that was a true picture of love and he said, woman, what have you done? She said, the serpent. Satan was very careful to hear the prophecies that will now come out of the mouth of God. And he said, this and that will happen. And he said, the seed will bruise your head. Now, understand that Satan has known that God is prophetic in his statements. The meaning of that was a confusion to him. Because until man came, reproduction had never happened. Only creation. They never knew that it was possible for a man to meet a woman all of a sudden satan saw me um i said mary um eve <laughs> getting pregnant and then she gives birth to cain and satan says this is amazing thinking cain was the seed of the woman that was prophesied he entered into cain are you seeing that then he saw that man can still get a woman pregnant again and gave birth to abel and he made cain kill abel are you following me now Genesis chapter 5. I want to show you the origin of the system of Babylon. That's why we are saying all of this. In the highest, let us.
Sorry, 4. 4 verse 16. Watch this. Cain, that rebel, Cain did not even know what happened to him. The devil found expression in him. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because he needed to continue that agenda. And watch this. This is the origin. From verse 16. It's projected. Read. One to read. And Cain did what? Stop. What does it mean to go out of the presence of the Lord? It doesn't mean to run away from him. It means to depart willfully from his governing authority. Cain said, God, as far as me and you are concerned, I, I refuse your headship over my life. And Satan said, this is exactly what I want. Are you getting the point now? Cain departed from the presence of God and he went and dwelled in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. 17. And Cain knew his wife and she conceived and bare Enoch. He had a son. And he did what? Built a city. Watch this. Because the pride of any king, kings named cities after their sons and so on and so forth, representing their future. This was the manifestation of the spirit of the Antichrist. He built a city and he called the name of that city Enoch after his son. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, from this city, Christ, or God as we know, was not the head of this city. It was a city of rebellion. Are you getting what I'm saying? All kinds of human atrocities began to happen. Anger, envy, killing, rivalry. It was, an, it was the government of Satan. The first manifestation of the government of Satan that our dispensation records started from Cain. Are you getting this now? And the Bible says, the moment that happened, we see the first manifestation of the spirit of Elijah in the Bible. It came in the person of Noah. Are you getting what I'm saying? The spirit of Elijah is not a person. It's not a prophetic spirit. It's the spirit that restores men to the ordinances of God. Because he said, every time a revival is about to happen in the earth, there is a spiritual pattern. Elijah must show up. Is that true? When, when, when there was darkness all around, Elijah the Tishbite showed up, right? Micah, Malachi chapter 4 tells us before the day of the Lord, Elijah will come again. Is that true? Before Jesus showed up, who came? Elijah. In John came in the spirit and the power of Elijah. Now, this Babylon, the spirit of Babylon is a governmental system. It's a system that is hungry for power and sovereignty and allegiance. Please understand this. That is the reason why Babylon oftentimes would operate with kings. Notice that Jezebel married Ahab the king. The same spirit of Jezebel reemerges in Herodias, making sure the original wife of the king dies. And then Jezebel in Herodias marries the king. Is that true? Herod in your Bible and then demands for the head of john the baptist what do you do with the head of a man in continuation to the vow jezebel made to elijah that i will remove your head after many years human beings change but the agenda is still the same are you getting what i'm saying hmm. so noah was the first manifestation of of a true son of God and, and, and I've told you again and again that the concept of the sons of God did not start in the New Testament right? We see in the book of Job 38, sons of God man was not even made that was during the creation of heavens, the sons of God were rejoicing it's an office in heaven
and sense the power of God very strongly. Are you following me now? Let's see how far we can go. Noah came. What was the instruction? He said, Noah, the earth has become wicked. I need to judge it. He said, build an ark. Theologically speaking, the ark was the, the size of three stadia, three large stadiums, right? Three story buildings made of gopher wood. Noah spent 120 years of earth's time building that. He committed his entire life to build the ark. And when that happened, Noah, his wife, the three sons and their wives entered in. And what happened? There was judgment. Is that true? The whole race was white. And out of eight people, the spirit of the Antichrist still testing for the continuation of the agenda. What happened? The Bible says Noah drank wine. And he was drunk. And then one of his sons saw his nakedness. I've said it again. That is a coded language. That is more than just seeing a man's nakedness. Don't parents take their, don't children take their parents to the hospital? Don't they bath them? What is it about seeing a man's nakedness that would demand such a cause? It was more than that. It was not just looking at a man's nakedness. There were mysteries that were given Noah. It was that mystery. The spirit of the Antichrist entered one of the sons and made sure he peeped into those mysteries because Satan does not know the future. I hope you realize that. It's because he did not know the future. That's why they killed many people during Moses' time. If he knew, he would look for Moses exactly and kill. Satan is not so accurate. You see, the goal of this is to demystify this guy that has threatened the nations. Because speaking, he said, O king of Tyre, he said, thou which subdued the nations. The strength of evil is deception. 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 Nations can be deceived. And if we are to be ambassadors, we must understand which gives us that which gives us strength in this day and this age. If you're following me, say amen. After the judgment of Noah out of the eight people, Satan found expression in one and wickedness grew. Watch this. Genesis 11 verse 1. We see the continuation of that agenda of the Antichrist system. In the first man, who originated what we have come to know today to be witchcraft and occultism he said and the whole earth was of one language and one speech verse 2 and it came to pass this and that the land of china verse 3 and talking about nimrod now nimrod kush that man nimrod have you read about him nimrod the son of kush now theologically speaking nimrod killed his father Cush and married his mother Semiramai and today she's the one that is worshipped in many sects as the queen of heaven hallelujah the spirit of the antichrist entered into Nimrod a governmental system see it again and he said come go to let us what build a city notice that every time that spirit manifests it seeks to build a city a godless governmental system that can authorize the activity of darkness in a way to mock god and brothers and sisters let me tell you everything that has happened from genesis 11 until jesus came was different ways and strategies for the devil to make sure that this agenda of darkness so the antichrist system is not just a system of witchcraft it's not just a system of perversion it's a system that seeks to transfer the allegiance of humanity to any other entity outside of god are you are you getting what i'm saying now this is a very powerful teaching if you do not understand this you you will be in for a root shock and you will not have the intelligence to confront the things around your life and to walk in victory watch this when jesus came when jesus came what happened matthew chapter 4 from verse 4 satan when he finished fasting i hope you realize that all satan had been doing do you know the reason why every nation fought israel because of that prophecy the seed will bruise the head of the serpent 
the moment God entered the covenant with Israel, they became the enemies of everybody because he had given them a clue that the seed must come out from that. Are you getting the whole thing? It wasn't just because Israelites were wicked people. No. The moment they became a covenant people, when John the Baptist came into the scene, what happened? The spirit of the Antichrist started moving the scribes to ask, are you the Christ? He wanted to know, are you the Christ? And John kept confusing them. He said, I'm the voice of one. He said, what, what are you? Are you the Christ? Don't confuse us. He said, I'm the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Repent. The moment John said, this is my, he said, behold the lamb. When he mentioned that from that time, watch this. Jesus became the enemy of the scribes, the Pharisees and everybody. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Now, um, Matthew chapter 4. When he took him, he said, man shall not live by bread. That's, he told him, turn this stone into bread, right? Temptation number two. He took him to a pinnacle in the temple and he said, John. John. Many of us would have jumped and died. Because we always like proving we are anointed. <laughs> you would have jumped and died. That would have been it. Case closed. No redemption. But next. Now watch this. Watch this. Verse 6 please. Let's go to verse 6. Or 7. 7. I'm looking for the third temptation. Uh, okay. 8. Let's look at 8. Okay. He says again, watch this. He says the devil takes who? Jesus, your Jesus. Satan told him, follow me. And Jesus went. It's in your Bible. Why? Because he had the keys of dominion. The very key of Adam was in his hands. And God had to respect it. He said, he took him to a high mountain. Where is this mountain in the earth today? That when you stand upon, you will see the glories of the world. It was a spiritual thing here. It was not just a, which of the mountains do you stand? It says Satan took him into, not upon, into. He entered somewhere. It's in your Bible. He took him into a high mountain and showed him the kingdoms of this world and the glory of them. He said it is mine. I know that you want this. Satan revealed here to us the strategy of the advancement of the antichrist system watch this this is how satan markets it in that mountain there is wealth in that mountain there is job without struggle in that mountain there is free marriage without toasting look up please are you getting what i'm saying and he said he took him up to that mountain and he showed him the glory so watch this satan never tells you what you are to do he first shows you what you will get so that it becomes difficult to say no. This is what he did to Jesus. He took him there and showed him everything. And then verse 9. And said unto him, all these things I will give thee. Meaning it was within his power to give anybody. Is it true? <laughs> it says, if thou will what? If thou will what? Are you seeing that? That was all. So it's not about money. It's not about cancer. It's not about HIV. It's about allegiance. It's not about witchcraft in your family. It's not about refusing the church from growing. It's not about stopping you from passing jam. It's bigger than that. Satan does not need all those things. It's not about demons oppressing you. There is a bigger story. If you don't understand, you will sit down in spiritual myopia, fighting all kinds of things. Here's the key. If thou will fall down and worship me. The Bible says the same spirit operated in Nebuchadnezzar and he built 90 feet of solid gold. Is that true? And he said the moment you hear music, everybody do what? Bow. Now, the goal is this. Satan does not want you to bow down directly to him because he, is, he was the God of this system. Watch this. He said, bow down to anything that is not God. It's still the same thing you are doing. Bow down to money. Bow down to women. Bow down to your uncle. It's still the same thing. Are you understanding the, the structure of the Antichrist system? 
So the Antichrist system is not just the system of occultism and witchcraft. It's the system that brings your life under compulsion to an allegiance to any other thing outside of the Christ. And there is a way that happens. Are you getting blessed, please? Jesus was eventually going to take back the kingdom, take back the keys. But Satan said, why follow the long route? We can negotiate and I can make this thing easy for you. Why go through all of this, this thing? Just bow down and have it. Right? Why spend years, uh, 10 years and, and almost die building a bungalow? Bow down to me and own estates. That's why the Bible says, what shall it profit a man? Have you read it in your Bible? If he does what? That means you can do business with your soul. The question is, who is buying it? You are the one selling it. Who is buying it? What shall it profit you if you gain the whole world and lose your soul? That means you sell your soul. The question is to who? Who is this person that can buy and do business with souls? Revelations 18. Let me show you. We hail you, Most High. I hail you, Most High. Revelations 18. Let me read very quickly. Watch this. It's going to be a long reading, verse 1. Revelations 18, verse 1. Are you there? And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven having great power and the earth was made bright with his glory and he cried with a mighty voice saying what Babylon is Babylon the great is falling it says and it's become the habitation of demons and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage for every unclean beast watch this mystery verse 3 let's see if media can help us if you are fast enough to help us then fine otherwise i'll just go back to my bible for all nations have done what have drunk the wine of the wrath of her fornication that's why you see women representing that system jezebel babylon when they meet prospective kings when they meet talented people like a harlot comes to a man they come seeking a fraternity bow down to me fraternize with me and i will open the gates of the kingdom i will open the gates of wealth i will open the gates of grace are you getting what i'm saying it says and the kings of the earth have done what committed fornication with her and the merchandise of the earth are wax rich through the abundance of her delicacies she made them rich she made the man a governor she made the man a president Voting or no voting? Huh? She made them celebrity stars on TV. Took them from rags to riches. Babylon the Great. Are you getting what I'm saying? When you understand this, you find out that nothing happens in the system until your allegiance to a deity is confirmed. That story of right, nobody rises up from nowhere is a lie. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There is a spiritual dimension to everything in life. When you see somebody just get up, travels out of the country and comes back and becomes a millionaire. The Bible says, ah, okay, we're in verse 4. The Bible says in verse 3 that the kings committed fornication with her. Let's run to verse 9. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived luxuriously shall bewail her and lament for her when they see the smoke of her burning. So there is a prophecy. The antichrist system will crumble. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Already there is a prophecy ahead that anyone that fraternizes with this system will join them. Babylon is falling. That was a prophecy. The system of the Antichrist will be crumbled and there is an entity that will make that happen. The name of that entity is called the church. 
This is why I'm teaching you what we're teaching. The church is not an institution. The church is the name of the spiritual entity that will crumble this system. Verse 10. Standing afar off for the fear of torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city, Babylon, that mighty city, for in what? One hour is your judgment come. One hour. All you will see is the smoke. The smoke of that city. Now watch this. I told you that through civilization, this strategy of the devil has been masquerading itself. In ancient times, the kings had fraternity with all of these demons of darkness and all of that. Watch this. When Jesus came, Jesus came to bring us back into the allegiance to God. Are you getting what I'm saying? But then from that time till now, there is a contention. And the contention is twofold. Number one, an opportunity given to every man to individually declare his allegiance. And then number two, to bring territories under the corporate allegiance of God. Are you seeing that now? So the first dimension is personal. That's what you call new birth. That's what you call salvation. A declaration that I choose. I have an option to choose between Babylon and this. I will show you how that many Christians suffer casualty. Because they claim they are born again. But they are still operating in the system of Babylon. Are you getting what I'm saying? And so Satan makes sure that the boss in the office, right? Fraternizes with Babylon. He, he will not go to the devil directly. He will go to a harbor list. And they will say, just make sure this and that happens. And you are the boss. And now you come to work. A Christian. You now come to work and you are under intense pressure. Because the presence of that man wants to push you to compromise on your integrity and your allegiance. Are you seeing how Babylon works? So you graduate with first class and you hold your degree and you are happy. The moment you enter the labor market, they stop you. They say, not so. Who sent you? Whose allegiance are you? You say, anyone, I need a job. That's the point. That's the point. The devil leverages on your desperation to succeed. Are you getting me? And shut the mouth of preachers from teaching that the kingdom of God too has a structure for your success. So in your desperation, Satan comes. He came after Jesus finished praying for 40 days. When a man finished praying, don't you need food? Praying and fasting. So he waits until that desperation is there. 29, 30, 31, 32. Your mother tells you don't return to my house again if you will not bring a husband and the devil now comes babylon there is an easier way bow down to me and a rich man will show up now and you will think he's play the moment you bow down here comes a rich man right and then you come and you begin that fraternity satan uses your allegiance to him to mock god You see that? Let me tell you something. The greatest insult you can give the devil is to stick to God regardless of what happens. I love you whether things go right or wrong and I'm ready to use your system no matter how slow it is. You see why it is important that preachers teach their congregation the kingdom way of doing everything. The kingdom way of doing everything. So you don't teach people, come to church, pray in tongues, but go to your, your workplace and they just say, ah, they are sharing something. There's one five, five hundred thousand that does not have a reason why they are sharing it. And they say, this is my pocket, just put my own fast. This is Babylon. Whether you, if, if nobody told you, I am telling you that is Babylon. So it uses different things. Mammon, it uses lust, it uses different skills. But it's still the same thing. Watch this. In our time, in our time right now, the name given to that devilish system, there is a name. The name is subtly, there's no time I would have, I planned playing a documentary, but we'll, we'll sleep here all night. 
if God grants us grace, maybe next week, there is the name given to the evolution of Babylon. It's called the New World Order, right? In the time of the kings, right from the last one or two centuries ago, it was called the Illuminati. That fraternity of darkness. Right? I know many of you have heard about it and just laughed. Look up. Let me shock you. Let me tell you a few things that will surprise you. They have controlled the media. Walt Disney belongs to them. CNN belongs to them. They control the information you hear. They control the movie you watch. It's a system. Are you getting what I'm saying now? They control the stock exchange market, Wall Street. They control everything, the governmental systems. They define our scope of civilization. And yet believers are there praying in tongues in church. And we do not understand that we are the ecclesia. The name given to the system that would take the authority of Jesus and prove that darkness cannot prevail where there is light. Please, are you getting what I'm saying? Very important. Don't say it does not concern you. Don't say it does not concern you. When you are in class and somebody looks at you and is frustrated by your passion from God and all of a sudden you see three carryovers you know you did well. FFF, welcome, Babylon is at work. Are you getting what I'm telling you? When a lecturer looks at you and says, if you want to graduate, you know what to do. Go and wait for me at the back of my office. What is that? The Antichrist system masquerading itself. Now it's not even masquerading itself. It's coming out openly. A man looks at you and says, look at your employment letter. I tear it in your presence. You go back and say, Lord, I love you anyhow. God doesn't want that kind of prayer. It's good to love him anyhow, but the church must rise. He says, we are the city set on a hill. We will keep begging when we remain poor and broke. We keep consoling ourselves that don't worry, the day Jesus will come, he will wipe our tears. He can wipe your tears now. Are you getting what I'm, sh I'm sharing with you? The system. Right now, little children, watch cartoons and see. Right? All kinds of 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 things that should not be shown children are so addicted not just because they want to watch there is a com they have mastered the mind don't forget they are receiving assistance from the realm of the spirit so little children love seeing blood they love violence you see a little doll baby right if they want me to buy this cup now they will give this cup heaps right this cup will have hips. It will say, use me. And you see the man rush, I want this one. Ten. Bring ten of this cup. Why? Because it is a system. It has been fabricated. It was so subtle. We didn't know when it has evolved. Are you getting what I'm saying right now? Seduction. The seduction. That's why it gives it the language of a fornicator. The same way a fornicator lures you into an unholy union that's what babylon is doing right now they determine everything everything they create the trends they do everything that happens they control our speakings our language right they tell you what to say they tell you what slang to say they tell you what film to watch they define what is civilization for you if you do not assume a particular mode you are not civilized and it mounts pressure on you and forces you to bend one time i i i think um i don't know where they took me to and it was time to eat and they brought all kinds of things i told them i said the work that i do if i use this utensils to eat i won't be satisfied get me a spoon i don't have time for for nonsense you bring all kinds of things i the bible says, he who does not walk should not eat that means he who walks You watch people in the restaurant sweating, pouring rice on themselves because they must use fork. Right? 
cutting themselves up with knife. I must do it. I'm not saying you shouldn't be civilized. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm, I'm saying, you see, a system has brought you under pressure. Right? I saw one guy bab his hair and bab dollars. And I said, this guy is broke. He's poor. Now, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not a religious person, trust me. But I'm saying, it is the pressure. He probably watched the actor of a film or a musician with dollars or something on his head. And he said, I must become like that. The pressure of Babylon. Are you getting what I'm saying? There were times when our secondary school had decent teachers. You dress, you talking, you look nice. Now, you go and see the people teaching. The guy enters as if he came to pick papers. How are you students? You see that? And, 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 the, and the students watch that. This is the model. This is the mentor that they have to become. If we do not become apostolic and prophetic in our approach, there will be casualty in the decades that are coming. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It is this kind of agenda that should govern things like politics. People ask me a question, I say, I, I don't like PDP, I don't like APC, I don't like anyone. All I know is whatever promotes God's agenda, I'm there. It's as simple as that. And we'll force the agenda of God to happen in this nation. For sure. For sure. The church is alive. Don't you think the church is dead? Ask Ebola. The church is very alive. Very, very alive. We sent it back to hell where it came from. Hallelujah. There may be imperfections, but the church is marching. Let me tell you, Jesus is found where the church is. No matter what happens, the church in Nigeria is alive. We are the firstborn of God. We will present to the nations true apostolic and prophetic Christianity before Christ returns. Yeah, that rejected stone. That, why do you think Boko Haram and the rest? It's not just about politics. They are being led by an influence they do not know. But the church will stamp them out next week i'll be showing you what we can do because they've made the church look powerless that if you don't have it's not just about finance there is an anointing jesus christ took his power and gave that system are you getting what i'm saying he didn't just call one person and say you i give you if you like this guy I give him no he took his power the power that will crumble babylon and said my ecclesia take it I've given it to you. But we do not know the scope of our use of that power is healing of cancers and this. Right? We do not know that we have the authority to take charge of territories and compel it to come to the alignment of the Christ. Let me tell you something. Days will come when things will happen in this nation. You will be surprised. You will wait and see tongue-talking Christian bankers we will sack anybody who does not love God without apology. Look, look, look. Watch this. The members will be in our churches. So we are the ones who will teach them. And this big mouth, it won't keep quiet. My goodness. My goodness. That time is coming. It's coming. That's what you are becoming. The Bible says, now are we the sons of God. And it does not yet appear. They don't know it. God has shrouded us in a mystery. When he's done with us, we will prove to creation that Jesus did not tell a lie. A witness is one who claims that the claim of another is true. If, I, if you steal our money and I saw you, right? And we're in court. They will say, stand, hold your Bible, swear that nothing but the truth. The moment you finish, they say, did you see it? I say, I saw it. They say, prove it. I say, this is the picture. So the church is here to demonstrate that although we were not there at the cross, there is a spirit that was there and he's in us. And in partnership with that spirit, we will prove that he's the king of kings and the lord of lords. No longer allowing Babylon to kill our children. Huh? I wanted to cane one small boy one day. I just saw him. He just looked at one small girl who was running to go and kiss. I wanted to call him, use two fingers, and just whip him and say, Who taught you? <laughs> Probably watch somebody do it. House help, relatives in the parlor, all kinds of, 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 of TV. Right? Look. Church, I want you to wake up. 
That's why we call this series the emergence. There is an emergence. The Bible says, Obadiah 1 verse 21, it says saviors. That's what he called them. Saviors shall arise. Brothers and sisters, hear me. Romans 8 verse 18, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared. There are people, there are people sitting right here that death will not carry them. It's not the issue of I shall not die. You can't die. The assignment compels God's integrity upon your life. Are you getting what I'm saying? No, no, no. Please believe what I'm telling you. There is a reason why you should not die. If you think it's just to keep being a liability to creation, you are in trouble. There is a way you become so relevant to the agenda of the king. And God gave us a sign. He said, when you begin to see darkness upon the earth, start rejoicing. It's time to arise. Are you not seeing what is happening in the earth? The meltdown. They've not seen anything. A heavy melt. Because the selfishness of man will never allow him to carry out Satan's agenda. Somebody will betray somebody. They don't have love. They cannot love. Because love is shared abroad by the Holy Ghost. Love is not affection. Love is shared abroad. That character that can make you almost die to protect another. They don't have it. That's what happened to Boko Haram. They started killing everybody all and sundry. When those who sponsored them started denying, they said, oh, you are denying us. Let's, everybody, you are our enemy. Hallelujah. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. Nations will crumble. It has only started. You, the pride of kings will be humbled. Their equation is being interrupted by a hand they cannot see. Like Belshazzar, the handwriting on the wall. When it writes upon your government is over. You have been weighed in a balance. And you have been found wanting. Many kings have. They've, they've, they've spoken like the beast. Their blasphemy has risen to heaven. Like the man who made the Titanic. And vowed that even God cannot sing the Titanic. And stood in awe when the Titanic sank. Only a fool will say in his heart. There is no God. There are people who have vowed and say, if you're, before your family will rise, me, I am the custodian of the oracles of this village. Watch God bring them down. We are here to stamp out nonsense. Listen, Jesus said, all hail. He said, all authority. The word is exousia. The capacity to stand in my office. All authority to unlock the heavens and the earth has been given to me. I give it to you. Please believe it. I give it to you. This is the mindset I carry when I pray for the sick. I know that they are, I take their sickness personal. Because this is about the kingdom of our father and what the devil is doing. It's not about what their village is doing. Kill yourselves there in your village. No. Hallelujah. So Satan has structured it well. He has marketed the gospel of prosperity subtly to the church. So that we remain poor and broke because the borrower is always slave to the lender. Right? He has marketed all kinds of things. So the attack is coming everywhere. Spiritually. Notice brothers and sisters. That our, our forefathers and grandfathers gave birth to 13 children. No CS. Huh? What they used to cut the placenta of the baby we don't even know. Whether it's hot, cold, whether, whatever. They just cut that 13 times and nothing happened. But here a woman comes because of her allegiance to God. Something happens. They now start saying there's a fibro. That devil is a liar. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. They will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Yeah, break every chain, break every chain. Sing it one more time. There's an army rising up. You're rising up. There's an army rising up. 
Balateka Naba Kosoto Balaraba Rising up to break every chain To break every chain. So the goal of the Antichrist system is total allegiance to Satan as the source and the sustainer of all things. Full stop. That's the one goal of the Antichrist system. To compel humanity to total allegiance to Satan as the source and the sustainer by depending on your boss for your daily bread you are partnering with that there is an economic system of the kingdom that is bigger than your boss but if you do not know and you have been taught that is salary that will fund your assignment you become a slave to that boss then he sleeps with you when he wants to sleep with you then he sacks you when he wants to sack you but there is an army of apostolic billionaires not just careless money mongers the secrets of the kingdom shown we are paying the price now and the world is laughing like the ark of noah the spirit of elijah is bringing us to that reality you've not seen prosperity yet brothers and sisters wait until the army rises men whose wealth will be as equal as that of continents they will walk like gods upon the earth why should you beg for give me 35 dollars to air a program how much is it when a prostitute sleeps with a billionaire and becomes a millionaire the next day? All these things are the speakings of the beast unto God. They rise as a, a filthy incense to the heavens. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So that's what is happening. Look at the graduates in Nigeria. One, one out of every ten graduates get a decent job in the first two years of graduation. That's the plan. Babylon at work. Babylon at work. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yet, when you teach the church economic empowerment, they mock you. They say you are being carnal. Right? We do not know that the civilization of today moves upon the strength of economic empowerment. The person who has the resources dictate the rules. We are sick and tired of them doing every kind of thing we will make our own programs we don't have dull people are you hearing what i'm saying there are many of you in your sleep you see these things in dreams you know that there is something about your life it's beyond abu it's beyond zaria some of you god took you wherever and brought you here god gave you admission with one taxi it's not about jam it's about an agenda hallelujah I see this thing every day as the nations crumble I see it as a signal God is saying son stand up stand up church rise up I call my bride the firstborn of God to arise but the reason is because we have refused to pay attention to the things that empower us hallelujah the the chairman board of trustee of this ministry was he was decorated a general last year i said that's right anybody that disturbs us will tell him he's part of kingdom advancement gathered men of influence and shut the gates of darkness are you hearing what i'm saying the kingdom will promote the ideology of god through one word it's called influence 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 that's why we keep contending for greater anointing and greater grace. The devil has spoke blasphemy too much. Are you getting what I'm saying? The church has been mocked. They act Nigerian films and they act man of God -da 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 -da, on a demon and then the, he, he releases power in the name of Jesus and the demon holds the anointing and throws it on the ground. Come on now. Which one is that one? There are all kinds of anointings. Which one? Which one did he hold and throw on the ground? There is the one you get as talisman. There is authentic apostolic power that Jesus, which one did the Havalis take and throw on the ground? See, we don't understand. These things bring money, but it is the, the generation of man bowing to Satan 
and receiving money. Let me tell you, if you are poor, let me just announce to you that your poverty is partnering with Babylon. Listen to me. It's a serious issue. It's not the issue of car. No! You don't, you don't need to be a Christian to have car. Men who will shut the gates of darkness, sack lecturers that trouble our ladies, employ the ones that call upon the name of the Lord. Next week I will show you the strategy. I'm not just making noise. I was trained in the wilderness of the spirit. I'm not a, I'm not a stupid person just making noise. There is a strategy. Lord, you were higher than any other. We will declare to the nations, our God. Sing it one more time. Say, our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Hallelujah. We just returned from a conference in Kaduna. And while I was ministering yesterday, they just brought one mama. You can see the way the devil had oppressed this woman. They were dragging her to bring her out. The son was almost crying. And I said, Hold on, we've not started ministering. They were desperate. Why? Most probably because they've gone to a lot of churches with men of God making noise. Jesus can do this. He is this. I know he can do this. Put your faith to work. The manifestation of the glory of God is a visible revelation of the power of God here and now. Here and now. The woman stood there. I was talking and I was just watching. I said, Mama, what is wrong? And they said, for five months, they've taken this woman to the hospital. They said, arthritis, she cannot walk. I, I said, that devil is a liar. All of a sudden, the Lord opened my eyes and I saw this innocent woman tied. I, from my head to her toe, I saw snakes. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest. For this purpose for this purpose for that joblessness the every time you see a challenge say for this purpose for this purpose they said you will not graduate for this purpose they said no job will come for this purpose for this purpose for this purpose, for this purpose. everybody in your family is an idol worshiper but for this purpose you came god has taken you as an envoy to crumble babylon to crumble babylon It will happen. Forget about the pain of today. Hear me. Forget about the disappointment. I see men and women who will get married. Age two, your child is praying in tongues. Age two, a little boy, while you pray in tongues, he's praying. No, 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 no. Listen, we won't be fighting and beating our wives. It's over. We, by now, we know it's a spirit and we have authority against it. Men are not that bad. Women are not that evil. Babylon masquerading itself. Gone are those days. I tell you, all things are past. God is doing something new in our time. God is working something powerful in this day. God is building a mighty army in our days and he won't stop he won't stop till we look just like him he won't stop hey, he won't stop till the church looks like him he won't stop he won't stop till we look just like him God is raising mighty men in these days. God is building a mighty army in these days. He won't stop, he won't stop till the church looks like him. He won't stop, hey, he won't stop till the church looks like him. Listen. 
next week I will show you the strategy on how this will happen don't you ever think you are little to make this thing happen once God can find a man and find a people he will do mighty things he told Jeremiah don't say I am young don't say I am a child I will put my, my words in your mouth you will subdue you will tear down and you will rebuild hallelujah tonight I came to challenge you Babylon is falling what you are seeing in the TV is falling the old wine has finished are you hearing what I'm saying the church is rising watch this Nigeria I told you I've shared with you already the prophetic agenda of God but Nigeria as a continent this platform is not the platform I will share some things with you that God has revealed to me there are some things that if they don't happen this year the hand of Satan has been broken in Nigeria forever till Christ comes are you hearing what I'm saying there is a reason why you see darkness looming it is beyond humans it's an agenda is the attacking of the firstborn of God but God is always one step ahead when you see the church pray and we speak don't let the devil fool you that nothing is happening there is much that is being done in the kingdom are you hearing what I'm saying when the dust settles you will see a victorious church he said I will build I will supervise that this church stands I will build my church but the goal is to have as many people come into this alignment look at me one man cannot do this alone one church one ministry cannot do this it takes a people who will say Lord we understand Lord we have pledged our allegiance first and foremost there are many of us here your stand with God is not straight we don't even know where you stand as occasion serves when in Rome behave like any other place that is not Zion is of the devil it's as simple as that for you to be part of this army your allegiance must not be confused where do you stand where do you stand the gates will ask you my brother it's not all about business they will trap you in that oil company where do you stand you must answer the question where do you stand where do you stand when you declare where you stand and then you have committed whatever government you pledge allegiance to as for me I've made a decision thank God I'm going to be a father from the womb you know how John the Baptist was filled with the Holy Spirit <laughs> many men are not responsible if you're a father here God is speaking to you take charge there are many homes you pray when there's trouble if they don't pay the man three months I say okay children let's come together and pray say let's pray because what God the attack coming to this family and you don't take your place right watch this forget about the flamboyancy you see on tv babylon is falling it's a prophecy babylon is falling and your assignment right now at this level is to be an envoy of the kingdom go to your territory do you know how satan is ravaging our homes there are people in our homes with terminal diseases you are watching them take that authority and that anointing if nobody has told you you are anointed I'm telling you this night you are anointed do you know how things went bad in my family I heard about I heard about the things that surrounded my bed and I said Satan you will pay for it ah you will pay for it Are you still afraid of the devil or should he begin to be afraid of you I told you it's an old story Satan is not the opposite of God there was a day he was not existing Satan has an exact creation date are you hearing what I'm saying the strength of evil is deception when you know where you stand and you understand what it takes 
to enforce that victory, he will stay clear of your life. Some of you get up in the morning, all kinds of pain. You just say, Kai, this pain. Ah, is this not how my mother felt the other day? Is that what you should eat? Look, I told you, take this word. Whatever goes wrong in your life, say for this purpose. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he may what? Destroy. 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 The church is the representation of the victory of Christ. The church is the representation of the fulfillment of prophecy. The church is the hallmark, the symbol of the wisdom of God. And we cannot fail. There is a generation that must not fail. We are going to pray. Look, you must, you must tell God, I am available. I am available. Some of you, God is calling you from your slumber, your spiritual slumber. Ladies, God is calling you. Forget about that allergy and concentrate on God. Allergy gives you one million, you insulted God. God wants to make you a nation. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Quit all of these carnal things and stay with God and watch him bless you. Don't ever let any man fool you, you know. Gone are the days where when you say you are going into ministry, people just look at you and say, Hey! You mean it? As if this kind, or you say, I'm going to marry a man of God. They say, Talk. His grace is of it. Why are you going to talk like that? You marry a busy businessman and you are happy. I'm X, Y, Z. You know, they have, it's part of this antichrist system because the, the, the revelation they are trying to say is you are marrying a poor, broke man, right? Your job is just to be suffering. They, they imagine four legs of, of firewood trying to cook food for church members. Must you think like that? Who taught you that? The kingdom of God is a prosperous kingdom. Let no man fool you. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's our year of the rain. The kingdom of God is a prosperous kingdom. He wants to give you the anointing and the influence it will take to legislate. But he first wants you to understand this system. Anytime you bow to anything or any principle that is not of God, realize that you are communicating your fraternity with Babylon. That becomes the basis. Your love for God and your passion to see his kingdom come becomes the constraint upon your life to run away from evil. Not the fear of Satan. Are you getting what I'm saying? I'm not going to come and try to sleep with a lady now. Why? Not just because I'm afraid of Satan, but because I realize the significance of standing in my position to declare my love for God and my passion, my contribution to see his kingdom come. And that love constrains me. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's why I preach. I came back, I came back to this town 12, 12 midnight on the dot. It was as if I was not seeing where my bed was. But I say, no problem, I must prepare. There are lives that we must sharpen because there is an agenda of God. And then one, one demon somewhere will go to call your name. I pity the devil that calls my name in any covert. Number one is that the fire that will come out from whatever they are invoking, that's not all. Two, the harpalist will die as a lesson that not everybody is touchable. My goodness, no matter how a madman is, he will not enter fire by mistake. There are, there, are, there, are, there are mad men and there are mad men. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Invoke nonsense. There are many times I'm about to travel. Somebody send a text. He says, it's so accident. I say, me. Hey. It's not, I'm not just bragging. I'm standing on a rock. Let this mind be in you. You have watched films where a boss will say, I will come and kill you and he will kill everybody helplessly. You have carried that mindset to work with God. The believer is supernatural in every way. I want you to understand this. Brothers and sisters, I've prayed for people with contagious diseases. If I'm lying by now, you would have known. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's easy to stand and speak. But what happens when you hug and talk to somebody with tuberculosis? 
or somebody with a, a communicable disease i've been doing this for years my body is as healthy as a baby's body healthy as a baby's body there is the reality of another life that when he's at work in you it will turn you into a superhuman hallelujah rise up we are going to pray i want us to insist on some things in the spirit please take this prayer session seriously for i reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us for the earnest expectation of creation awaits the manifestation of the sons of god hallelujah prayer point number one i'd like you to lift your voice and cry and say lord i declare i pledge my eternal allegiance to you from today there's no going back there's no bending lift your voice and pray you are the lord of my life there's no confusion about it what shall separate us from the love of god in the secret and in the open i love you i belong to your government there's no confusion about it i belong to your government there's no confusion about it pray I compel my life to come under the influence of your government. I compel my life to come under the influence of your government. My thought comes under the influence of your government. My words under the influence of your government. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hear me. Look up. Let me speak to you. Whether you are coming from Plateau State or Kogi State or wherever, you are going to be, you declare, I've been called out of every tribe. Hear me? Every tongue. Listen. Don't let yourself to be a victim of where you have come. You did choose it. Don't let anybody speak nonsense and say you came from Kogi State. You came from this as though there is a cause upon your life and there is no way out. Prophesy with violence in your spirit. I've been called out of every tribe, every tongue. I challenge every power that is not of God. Oh, I'm anointed. I carry the fire of the Holy Ghost the fire of the Holy Ghost as an envoy of power as an envoy of the kingdom as an ambassador as a representative called out of every cause called out of every covenant called out of every ordinance Pray. He maketh his angels winds and his ministers flames of fire. I have no business with the ordinances of the fathers, with the ordinances of witchcraft. I willingly, I choose this day that I serve the king. I choose this day that my allegiance is to Christ of him. don't stop praying don't stop praying you are creating a reaction in the realm of the spirit silent Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Look at me. There are many of you, humanly speaking, you are seeing patterns in your family and around your life you know should not be. It's true that you have been saying you are in Christ, but the truth is that as it is right now, there are things you are seeing in your life that are speaking blasphemy to the Lord. You are going to pray. You know what it is. You are challenging Babylon first in your life and in your family. Call it by his name and cause it by the God of heaven. Lift your voice and pray. Break those patterns. Come on. Now. Break those patterns. That pattern of childlessness. I break it. I cause it by the God of heaven. That pattern of failure. That pattern of lust. That pattern of addiction. That pattern of masturbation. That pattern of immorality. I curse you by the God of heaven. I curse you by the name that is above every Pray your way out. Pray your way out. Pray your way out. Way out. I break the patterns. I of Jesus. I challenge the forces of darkness. Pray. I travel by the Spirit in the name of Jesus. The sun shines for my family. The sun shines for me. I cannot go down. No way. There is a spirit of God upon me. Call it by name. Call it by name. Call it by name. If thou shalt say to this mountain, if thou shalt say to this mountain, if thou shalt say, if thou shalt say, if thou shalt say, my protoscope. Command victory, establish victory, in pain, establish victory in the name of Jesus. Break down the walls of witchcraft. Break down the walls of evil. Break down the walls of limitation. You are an ambassador. You carry a big. God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with we stamp power and might. Sing it from your heart. It's a song of victory. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above I tell you, you will come out a champion. No power will keep you. yourselves into two you're going to release prophecies upon that person listen 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 the bible says where the word of a king is there is power where the word of a king is there is power hallelujah i like you to pray as if you are praying for your own brother as if you are praying for your sister prophesy 
open the fountains of blessings open the fountains of grace come on now koinonia pray i call you blessed i strengthen your is your season of the rain the glory of the lord is upon you the favor of the lord is upon you prophesy from the depth of your heart call it forth even god who quickeneth the dead and calls for the things that be not as though they were prophesy i call for that in your life i of light passion i call it forth i call it forth upon the dimension of wealth and abundance supernatural jobs open doors new levels of revelation new levels of hallelujah hallelujah when we pray we shift things in the heavens when we pray we we grant the angels access to enforce the counsel of the of the lord listen we are going to pray the election is by the corner we are going to pray the bible says pray for the peace of jerusalem zaria is our jerusalem we are going to speak to the borders of this city we stay the hands of evil the hands of bloodshed you will not cross the circumference of this city we hold the keys of this city and we drive out every devil come on pray is your jerusalem there will be peace upon our walls peace upon our borders shalom zaria shalom zaria we pray upon the borders of this city the north to the south we command peace shalom shalom nothing missing nothing broken we drive out every power we drive out every force we take charge of the heavenlies we take charge no death no bomb blast no bloodshed in the name of jesus the church is praying the church is praying the government of god the institution that carries his authority is praying We speak hallelujah now we are going to pray i feel sorry for those who say nigeria will divide they don't know the mystery of our creation go and read isaiah 18 when you see the representation of nigeria in isaiah 18 you know that no human entity has what it takes to break this nation are you ready to pray you're going to pray to every border first secure your family I'm not hearing bad news. It's, it's not, no, 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 no. Refuse it and pray. Spread the peace of the spirit across the length and breadth of this nation. Go ahead and pray. We legislate as ambassadors of the kingdom. We command it in the name of Jesus. In Abuja, in Kaduna, in Jos, in Makodi, in Kogi State. Potakot, we command, let there be peace. Let there be peace. Let there be peace in our nation. Even in the forthcoming election, let there be peace. Let there be peace. By the mercy of God. By the mercy of God. Remember your firstborn, O God. Remember she that you died for. Remember your firstborn, oh God. For God and for God. 
we pray and we invoke the mercy of God upon our families frustrate the token of liars turn their wisdom backward in the name of Jesus Christ Hallelujah. 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 I want you to know that you're establishing things in the spirit. This is how kings reign. The Bible says, let it be done in the earth. In other words, compel compliance. Hallelujah. Compel compliance. Now we are going to pray. This is the season of the rain. Hallelujah. And you are going to speak over your life. Remember I told us that God is, God is changing the dimensions and the levels of people. You must say amen to it in your life. And you are going to pray. There are all kinds of encumbrances that have mocked the integrity of God upon our lives. It's time to challenge it right now. You are going to speak. Whatever area, mention it. And speak. If it's marriage, say it. It must happen. If it's your finances, pray. The wisdom, the strategy, the grace. Lift your voice and pray. From glory to glory. Shalom. You're welcome in this place. Shalom. 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 Shalom, Shalom, Jehovah, Shalom, Shalom, hey, you're welcome in this place. Shalom, Jehovah, Shalom, Shalom, you're welcome in this place. Shalom. Unto him that answers prayer shall all flesh. And this is the confidence we have in him. That when we pray, he heareth us. It is within his power to grant us a request. Hallelujah. Listen. I want you to begin to walk with this consciousness I am part of the ecclesia there is only one way the counsel of God can happen in the earth the church only there are not many options the church is the strategy the church is the force that will conquer Babylon so I want you to know that whatever it takes for God to demonstrate his might in the church he will do it he will do it for his name's sake. He will do it for his name's sake. Walk in that consciousness. It pays God in every way to bring breakthrough to your family. It pays God in every way to make his word come to pass in your life. The question is to what degree are you willing to partner with him? Both in principle and in prayer. Hallelujah. I've made up my mind that in my life, and in my time, the counsel of God must come to pass fully, fully, fully. Hallelujah. There are people here, before I just pray for all of us, there are people here right now, you have a desire to live for God and to serve God, but as it is, you are still operating in the government of the Antichrist. 
and God is calling you to make your ways right and in a very unambiguous way declare your allegiance he said choose ye this day choose ye this day it is within your power you may not be able to change your life by yourself but you can make that decision there are people inside and outside right now hallelujah and as i make this call i want you to find your way and come it's our joy and pleasure to welcome you the victorious family because babylon is falling i guarantee you babylon is falling every system that is not of god will fail when all is said and done christ will still be seated upon his throne as the king and the church will stand victoriously wherever you are you need to make it right with god or rededicate your life make your way to the front right now god bless you don't wait for anybody inside and outside it's time to declare your allegiance choose ye this day choose ye this day whom you will serve he said but as for me and my house as for me and my house there's nothing to be ashamed of don't let the devil cheat you win that war of destiny it's time to make it right for God so loved you he gave his one and only begotten son no matter what you have done no matter what the story is make your way make your way and let him give you a new beginning no matter how far keep coming koinonia celebrate them keep coming hallelujah yes to your will Lord. yes to your ways that's what you're here to declare oh, oh yes lord i will obey yes to your will lord yes to your way oh, oh yes lord listen when you come to jesus part of what happens to you is he supplies the grace you cannot help yourself but you can choose to authorize him to your life now look up please don't be emotional about the decision you are making because it's a serious decision are you getting me as i lead you through this prayer i want you to know that grace will be supplied lift your right hand high to heaven and say after me from the depth of your heart you're not reciting a point say lord jesus I love you with all my heart I declare that I believe in you tonight I have heard your word and I declare that there be a translation from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light right now I receive eternal life into my spirit I declare that Jesus is my Lord and my Savior and my King from now and henceforth I denounce sin and Satan I denounce the way of the flesh and I declare that Jesus is my Lord now let me pray for you father see these hands that are lifted a public declaration of your allegiance to your government this is why you died I pray that you supply upon them the grace it will take to live victorious. I cause the power of sin over your life. In the name of Jesus, may you join this great army that will crumble Babylon. May you join this great army that will be envoys of his presence. May you join this great army that will be witnesses for his majesty that at the end of your life may he say well done good and faithful servant i pray for you that everything that lures you to the way of the world grace is supplied upon you in the name of jesus christ thank you lord jesus amen and amen thank you for this great decision now i'd like you to just follow the lady waving her hands there's someone waving her hands or there's a gentleman waving his hands just follow him they'll have your details in one minute and you'll be back celebrate them koinonia hallelujah hallelujah 
please join me as we celebrate those who are worshiping with us for the first time if this is your first time inside and outside we love and honor you please make your way to the front god bless you we want to welcome you and speak a word of blessing come on koinonia celebrate them celebrate them god bless you god bless you abba koinonia this is not your best no matter how far make your way to the front god bless you god bless you thank you thank you so much hallelujah thank you so much thank you so much for coming god bless you we really appreciate you and we honor you every one of you praise god this is koinonia a meeting put together by eternity network international we are here every friday and i assure you your life will never be the same jesus brought you here to bless you and to lift you you will return back with a new hunger a new grace and you will find out that you begin to experience multiple breakthroughs in your life hallelujah we are anointed and when we pray for you things happen we want to pray for you right now and we want you to believe saints of god stretch your hands and prophesy in the name of jesus we speak over your life and your destiny may you know that you met god tonight in the name of jesus we plant a deep hunger in you for spiritual things we declare that you will experience all sorts of breakthroughs in your life in the name of jesus christ May the Lord bless you. May the Lord honor you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you peace. We declare that you will move from glory to glory. Whatever challenge you came here with, we declare that it ends in your life. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for these ones. We love and we honor them. Thank you for bringing them. We truly, truly appreciate you for bringing them. Let their lives change. Give them testimonies. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you once again for coming. Please, I'd just like you to follow the ushers just in one minute. to welcome you more warmly on our behalf. They'll just have your details and you'll be back. Immediately after the service, I'll wait just for a few minutes um, just to see one or two people since they'll not be counseling on Monday. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Celebrate them as they go. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashka Nakata Branda Katekatos Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take a legata. The face of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.